Hello and welcome to this Project in a Box video. This is part three covering navigation, looking at the new method manager for version 5.3. This is part three of a five part series. So let's get on with talking about navigation then. So we left the last session, session two, where we'd established the process or customized the process uh, for our methodology. And now we want to look at how we're going to manage the navigation around that. So finishing with the red and blue sections in the tree, we come down to process images. Um, we can see we have a number of JPEGs here. The background for all process images is a JPEG. It can't be a GIF or a TIFF or any other image file. It has to be a JPEG. Um, and you can add new JPEGs by simply by clicking on process images and doing add image. Or of course, you can replace some of the existing ones. We'll talk about replacing ones a bit later. We'll add a new one in a minute, but before we just do that, let's double click to open our image. And you'll see that we have um, the, the background image shown here with a number of these dashed boxes shown on top. These are what we call maps. Um, and these control the, the action that a user gets when they click on that area in the main system um, when they've you know, got a project created from this method. And we can have any number of maps on the diagram. Um, when you build up quite a complicated structure of a diagram like this, um, you sometimes want to copy it, the whole thing, rather than setting it up again a second time. And that's because sometimes we try and have consistency between the, the diagram we see in the Windows application and the diagram we see in the browser. And sometimes they do have to be pretty much the same for consistency, but they have to have slight differences in them because not all the functionality that's available in the Windows application that you might want to put in your diagram is available in the browser. So there'll need to be subtle differences from the two. Rather than having to set them all up to be identical, like I say, you might want to copy one. So you can do that by right-clicking on an existing diagram and doing duplicate copy. And that will, Method Manager will create a duplicate set of mappings for you and also a duplicate named image as well in the Images folder of the method template. So it's establishing again all of those materials that you'll need when you finally upload it. And then you can personalize A, the image, um, and B, the of course, the maps for that. Of course, sometimes we're taking images out as well. So we might be using delete image to take an image away. We might want to move them up and down in the list. Which order they're in in the list isn't particularly important. Um, although for organization, you might want to have a particular pattern. So. Um, Adding images is, is quite uh, easy to do. We will add one in a minute. Um, I want to just talk first of all though about the three different types of rules that we have for images. So when we open our project in the main application, uh, it opens with a certain image and it has to know which of the images to show. Same when it opens in the browser, it has to know which of the images it needs to show. And also the sidebar for the browser, it has to know which image to show there. Um, and that's particularly important because in a method like this particular one here, um, we've got different images depending on whether we're before the gate and in the demand process or after the gate and in the project delivery process. So, for example, we've got a sidebar here that's used during the demand process and a sidebar here that's used once we're live into the project. Um, and obviously, we want to show the right one at the right time because it has different functions available on it. So how to know how to do that? Well, you have to tell the system, of course, how to do that. So we come to File, and we have these three rules pages. Client, that's the Windows application. Hub, that's the browser, and the sidebar rules. They all follow the same sort of pattern. Often, there's just one rule, and it just says, show this name diagram for any license type and any permission and it's just blank the rest of it and that's it always shows everybody the same diagram but you don't have to have it like that you can have a set of rules and it will try and meet the first rule and if it doesn't do that it will go on to the second rule so um, we can see the same diagram options here um, using the the presentation names of the diagrams and we can see the rules we've got so we are going to show this which is the project operational rule to all users as long as the idea status equals approved so you've seen me a number of times in these sessions already go and set that approved status which triggers the 
display, change of display to show as the live project diagram. If that condition is not met, for all other conditions, it comes and shows us the demand management. So the default position is to show demand management unless it can meet the first criteria. Now you can set these up to be whatever you want to. So it's not uncommon for customers to have a different diagram for different types of users. So you've got permissions groups in here. So you can give um, a different group to people in different different diagrams to different people in different permissions groups. So for example, you can have a permission group called management team and they can see a different diagram to everybody else if you want them to. And that can have different information on it, different buttons, different reports, different sets of documentation, etc. So we set that up for the client homepage and then we do exactly the same for the browser. And you see we've got different diagrams we're showing in these circumstances. Um, we, we're using the same rule condition actually. So this again has that, if it, if it doesn't meet the approved status, then we show the demand diagram. If it does meet the approved status, we show the normal project navigation diagram. And the same one, of course, for the hub sidebar um, with the same conditions applied. So that seems fairly seamless, but it's because we've put that that um, material into place already, that logic into place already in the method. And And probably the most common mistake that people make with method templates is they... Uh, work their way through the processes, they set it all up, they come and set up diagrams and put all the mappings on and that sort of stuff fairly intuitive. Um, and they check they add a new diagram or a new image and, and set the mappings or they change the name of the one that's there already. They upload it to the server, create a project and the project as soon as they try and open it gives an error message. And that error message is usually along the lines of um, cannot find the image required. So the, the image that they're supposed that the rules tell it to show isn't an image that it can find within the image set. And that's always about those rules not being correctly set um, for the method. So we're talking about it now up at the front because it's an important thing uh, to do and it's good once you've added the diagrams that you want to, to get make sure those rules are correct before probably you go on into all the nitty gritty stuff that you're going to have to do in terms of setting up mappings. So let's just add another image and see how easy that is to do. The image can be anything we want it to be. So actually, I'm going to come, uh, I'm going to use uh, Office Layout here, which is a JPEG I've just got lying around. Um, not, the, not the immediately obvious sort of thing that we might think of using, but it's going to just prove the point that we can use any background image that we want um, for our, uh, our navigation. So um, let's think about adding mappings to our um, uh, to our diagrams. Um, I'm going to come back up to this one, which is the project diagram that we get to see. As I say, if we've passed that uh, status approved test, um, and we're going to have a look at the maps that are on here. So there are a, a load of established maps. Um, when nothing, when it's not clicked, you see a very thin purple outline. It goes to a thicker pink one once it is clicked. Sometimes it can be a bit difficult to see because they might like, generally, of course, they often line up with the edge of existing boxes that you've got. So, um, so that can be a bit of an issue, but, um, but on the whole, not too bad. Uh, they're relatively easy to find because if you click into one of the boxes, you'll see if it's got a map on it or not. Um, now maps, like the overall diagrams, can be copied. So we can duplicate a map if we want something that says that does exactly the same thing, and we can then personalize it, you know, change it, customize it to pick up something different. So for example, you know, when we build things like these, the first one would have been built, and then a copy would have been taken, and we'd have just changed the property name. Um, and we'll talk on about uh, about info panels a bit later, um, or these navigation blocks here. The first one could be built, it could be copied. The second one just has a different sub-process hooked to it in terms of navigation. Of course, you can also delete maps that you no longer want. So if I do copy, say, one of these uh, and duplicate map, I've got my duplicated one there, I'll put it down here out of the way. If I now, and of course I can come in here and you know, work on it. If I don't want it anymore, once it's the highlighted one, I can do delete map, 
and it will remove it away for me. So that's nice and easy. If we want to add a new map, normally a brand new map, we'll do draw a map like that. And then you'll see the cursor changes to this crosshairs and we can draw on the map size that we want. It's always a rectangle. Um, there's a minimum size, as you can see, for those maps, which is that. Um, but you can make them as large as you want. And so we'll go for one that size here. And then you double click into it and you'll find that um, it's available for you to, to fill in. Now it shows you up here, this is a new edition, um, exactly where that's placed on the diagram with a border around it so that you can see what's going on. Um, and that's because when we come on to talk about uh, info panels in the next session, we're going to see that we're going to need to often line these things up quite carefully with um, other text and boxes, etc., that are on the screen. We can see the top left location of that, 738, 390, and we can see the size of that um, width and height. And so if I wanted, if I want to make some changes to that, so make, let's say 400 and apply, you see it moves it for me, moves it down the screen. So we can move these around to get them exactly lined up. And that's what this is. You know, we've got a bit of a zoom in effect um, and we can see exactly what we're doing in terms of lining the box up. So that's adding a new map. Of course, we can give them names if we want to. We don't have to. It's also going to auto generate a uh, a name which is unique for us because they do need to be unique and then we can come in and start to decide what this is going to do so in terms of the pure navigation which is what we're focusing on in this session um, there are four different actions available to us for this box actually it can have no navigation at all and just be an info panel which we're going to talk about in the next session but in this case we're going to look at and in fact, it can be an info panel and have navigation. But for the moment, we're just going to talk about um, about navigation. So four different types. The first type is image and it allows you to jump from the image that you're currently looking at to one of the other images here. And we use this quite commonly for uh, giving users the feel of drilling down into further detail. Um, they move from one background diagram to a different one with different mappings on it. So if we select image, we then need to select the value for that action. And that will, of course, be from the images list. And I can use um, my new one that I've added, Office Layout here, like that. Now, if I save this and create a project from it, then the users clicking on that area there will be taken to our new diagram, the uh, Office Layout diagram. Um, in practice, they won't necessarily know that's the case because this image doesn't have a background with a box in that place. So, uh, you know, it is important to try and line up, obviously, the background images with the click areas so that users can follow that easily. But it's not necessary, it's not mandatory to have it like that. Uh, this info panel up here, for example, is just on white space because it's some text we want to show. It doesn't have to line up with anything if you don't want it to. Um, so that's uh, an image type. And so we use that feature. So for example, here, you see this is an image type link and it's linking to the admin diagram. If we go and look at the admin diagram, like this, it's set up so that it's exactly the same size. It's got the same header and arrangement. And it looks like it just, it looks like a, a sort of website change, you know, or something like that, where you click on um, something and the content changes but the, the circumstances around it don't. So the header is all the same. You get new content, you click on this one, it's gonna take you back to the original diagram. So we've got a sort of forward backward mechanism working around two different diagrams that are exactly the same physical size, um, but they have different content in. And in fact, we can come back here to look at that. You see, we jump to that one, we jump back to that one. And that's just how that process works um, and that's that's pretty um, straightforward um, and intuitive for users um, and obviously what you write on these forms is important here um, now when we're making navigation changes I, I was very uh, clear in the process step that 
you shouldn't be changing process names because process names are only set up uh, sub process names etc that for that structure are only defined for the project at the point you create the project um, never used again the navigation instructions are used live so when we go to the main system and open the project it goes to the method template and it says follows the rules about which diagram it should give me and then um, it lays out what the diagram should do depending on the mappings and uh, and then follows those instructions so actually you can check you can add new things like this an extra diagram and some changes of buttons like that um, to existing projects just by changing the current method next time you select the project it'll use that new version of the method it'll have the new diagrams and the new links in there to enable you to jump around as long as you don't add any new process steps you can add new links to the same process steps that's not a problem but what you can't do is add new sub processes to the method so these sort of changes that we're making here can work you know live onto existing projects as well as new projects whereas the stuff we did in navigation earlier uh, sorry in process earlier was all about just the new project the next project that you create so that's our um, uh, image type of map. The next one we're going to look at is explore. And we've got quite a few of those here. Um, so the action is explore. And the value is it takes me to one of my previously defined process sub process combinations. In this project, we've got the ones that we know about already, include our, include our new one, review meet him and we can go to one of those combinations. So it's about pointing people at that set of documentation. And obviously each of these will point at a different set. And I say obviously, I mean, that's that's what it's set up to do. You don't have to do that, of course, you can do whatever you want to, but uh, but it is set up like that. And sometimes to, to match the shape of the space, you might need to do something a little bit clever. So this has got, there are three different boxes pointing to manage stage here. This one, manage stage. This one is also pointing to manage stage, as is this one here, be so that this one can be a sort of simpler box over the top. Um, because there's nothing to stop you overlapping your, your mappings, um, the system will try and interpret what it should give you based on what happens. <laughs> uh, uh, perhaps which, or which one came first um, is the most likely way it works. Uh, so a good idea is not to overlap them because it's it's obviously not entirely predictable to the user or to you even as you set them up which result you're going to get when you overlap them so we try not to overlap if possible the difference to that would be these info panels where these are not clickable they're just showing content and so they can overlap absolutely fine it's when the clickable actions the navigation overlap that you've got a potential issue so let's go and add some new ones of those. We're going to add it to our new diagram that we've just added, the office layout here. Um, so let's do draw a new map. We'll come up here and we'll say the action is explore and we're going to take people to our review meeting. There we go. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, like I say, you can have as many of these as we want to. So over here we could have one that takes people to uh, the uh, closing a project content like that and of course we could have a map which takes us back to uh, an image type map which takes us back to our main navigation diagram that we want okay so adding those maps pretty straightforward next type of map we've got is a shortcut map now this doesn't take you to a piece of content in the system or a new image it takes you to um, a, an external location that's specified by a hyperlink so when we click shortcut you see it says shortcuts are stored in the library folder and it gives me a list of all the url shortcuts that are in the library folder currently i can choose the one i want and that box when somebody clicks on it will now go and open their browser and take them to that URL destination. This is used for linking people to guidance materials quite commonly or to other web-based systems. Um, of course, if you want to set that up, 
you'll need to come to your method template go to the library add the shortcut as a shortcut link here so it's pickable in the form so you do have to think about your shortcuts in advance and set them up here um, it doesn't work if you use the shortcut as the shortcut name so you can't have you know, www.google.com as the as the file name um, it doesn't like that at all it has to be a sort of sensible meaningful descriptive type name so they're pretty straightforward and often most methods will have one or two just guiding people back to a central guidance point you can be much more specific about that of course um, as we are in some of our methods like the praxis framework has a large number of those taking you to particular parts of the praxis website for guidance materials so let's look at the fourth type here and this one is um, is quite an interesting one it's client menu item now this allows you to link to the menu items that are in or the functionality areas if you like of the application so if we wanted to take somebody to the collaboration threads we would choose collaboration and when they clicked on that in the diagram that would open up the collaboration form for this project um, and most of the rest of them are pretty intuitive um, we've got different reports and different data type views admin type things managing user accounts report specifications all the normal sorts of things when you're using these you do have to be a little bit careful because if your diagram is made available to all the users of the project and you make a link to something which is an admin type form like managing say views and a normal user tries to click on it if their permissions don't match they won't be able to be shown the form and they'll get a message which comes up said not permitted um, which can be a bit annoying for them not the end of the world necessarily but just a bit annoying um, if they've got the appropriate permissions they will see the the form um, now if you're doing different diagrams for team members to administrators then you can very much think about that the other approach is the one that we take most commonly which is to indicate with a key that if you try clicking on some of these things you're not necessarily going to get them because you're not going to have permissions to see them so this one for example is set up to take me to my tasks not all the tasks because to get to all the tasks you'd have to have modify permissions so we show the my tasks so every user can see that when it comes to running reports um, updating properties going to admin facilities um, those require a higher level of permission and so we indicate that to the users just to manage expectations and we don't want them you know so then when they get a a message coming up saying not permitted they've got some idea why that might be the case so that's that's an important aspect to think about when we're setting up managing saved views the other asp the other three navigation types available to everybody everybody sees the same thing um, but not uh, with the client menu items now client menu items list here is set up for the Windows application primarily um, many of these the same code will work for either the browser interface or the Windows application some of them um, the brown if you're unsure though the browser application what you do is you use the name of the page so um, this is the Explorer page so if you type in Explorer you'll get Explorer if you go to a bit of menu like the tasks list you can use tasks and that will bring you to here um, and that's the case for all the other items as well um, so they're fairly easy to set up like I say sometimes there's a slight discrepancy between what's on the Windows application and the browser so you may need sometimes depending on what you've put on your diagrams you might need to have two different diagrams one for each interface um, so that's those four different types of um, of linkage of navigation linkage um, and like I say they're pretty straightforward to set up the more complicated thing is info panels which we're going to do in the next session um, but these ones are fairly straightforward um, one particular thing I wanted to then talk about was how you replace images because often people work so I'm saving my method here often people work with a 
um, a, a sort of temporary image to start off with. You might view this as a temporary image, but then you might want to change it into a proper finalized, nicely designed image. So there, there isn't a replace image facility within, directly within Method Manager, but there is a really good way of doing it. So what we do is we save and close Method Manager because these images are essentially held by Method Manager when it's still open. And we can come to the folder which contains our images here. And you'll see it's now got our office layout in here. Now, if I replace this image with a new one of exactly the same size with the same name and reopen Method Manager, it will have it will be just showing me the background of that new one. And that's the one that will be loaded up and used by the system when we create our projects and want to navigate them in the in the main system. So that's a pretty straightforward thing to do. Obviously, it's important to check the sizes of these because if it's a different size, so we can see the size of this one in pixels. If it's a different size, then um, all the boxes will have moved slightly. So commonly, when you're building your methods, you have you know graphics package where you've drawn your diagrams. You keep those because if you want to change it later, maybe something as simple as just changing the logo that you're using. Um, for a new company logo when it gets rebranded or slightly rejigging the color schemes. You've got the original diagram. You can just change, modify slightly the bits that you want, produce a new JPEG, and you've got that then there to drop straight in. And you're not having to remap or move around all the buttons again and again. These normal diagrams can be whatever size you want them to be, actually, and it will try and scale them appropriately to fit the page. If you're working in a browser, and most people's laptops these days are a particular aspect ratio, um, you want to use something that fits nicely into that. The Windows application, you can, of course, um, move your diagrams around so you can make them as big or as small as you want. Um, so the size and arrangement of it doesn't particularly matter because you can move it around. In the browser, though, like I say, you're going to want generally to try and fit that space. So we've gone into a format which broadly fits that type of space, and we use the same one for both. The sidebar, though, here does have to be a particular size because it has to fit in that space there. And the standard size for sidebar uh, you can actually take from one of the ones that's here already. So if we just go properties and details, we can see we've got 75 pixels wide by 395 long. Um, and all sidebars need to be that same size. Within that size, you can do anything you want to with them. And of course, you can set up mappings in them just like we do in the other diagrams. They're exactly <laughs> diagrams exactly the same. They operate in the same way. You click on something, it will drive that functionality for you, ov obviously only in the browser interface. Um, OK, so that's talked about the sort of simple navigation. Um, what we're going to talk about now uh, in the next session, uh, that's session four, is info panels. That's displaying our active content from properties through onto our diagrams. OK, I hope you found that helpful. Thank you.